For the past few years, many people working for the state of Oregon who can do their jobs from home or really from anywhere have lived outside the state of Oregon. That's not likely to change anytime soon for most of those workers, but what is changing is that they will soon have to pay their own way to come back if they need to return to the office for a meeting or for training. Oregon Governor Tina Kotek announced that yesterday workers will no longer be reimbursed for their travel expenses if they work remotely. The change goes into effect in September. That's nearly a year after Willamette Week first reported on the policy back in August of last year. They broke the story that the state was paying thousands of dollars to bring workers back for meetings. Some workers live close by, maybe just over the border in Washington. But we also found when we dug into it, others live as far away as Florida and New York. The policy started during the pandemic because so many workers had moved away while they were working remotely. And in a tight labor market, state officials said, well, allowing workers to be remote was important for keeping them. And well, they told them that they'd pay for their travel back to the office because, again, they wanted to keep them. Now, some workers are living in states with no income tax. And when they need to come back to Oregon, you, the taxpayer, including right now, are paying for their flights or their trips. Our research found about 300 workers in far-flung states, including Georgia, Kentucky, Arkansas, New Mexico, and a whole bunch more. We also found state agencies had paid at least $35,000 to bring remote workers back to Oregon. I know it's not a huge number when you're thinking about a state budget that's like $32 billion. But plenty of people on both sides of the aisle said that's a bunch of baloney. It's time to change that policy. Senate Bill 853 was introduced this session by Senate Minority Leader Republican Tim Canope. The bill had bipartisan support. Canope actually called it the session's most bipartisan bill. And he may have been right. It sailed right through the Senate, approved unanimously. Well, actually, it sailed through after they fixed the things the union did not like about it. But here's what he told us earlier this year after the bill was first introduced. There are every member of the Senate wanting to make sure this policy changes, and we're going to work to try to make sure that it does. We have nearly half the House as sponsors as well, and I think people recognize the inequity here and that if this policy continues, that it will continue to be exploited by more and more employees. But before the House could work on it, which was scheduled to happen today, Governor Tina Kotek came out and changed the policy on her own, announcing the change yesterday afternoon. We wanted to know why the changed policy now all of a sudden. Her office told us, well, the governor's reviewing COVID area policies in the wind down of the public health emergency. Human resources policy making should be flexible and responsive to workers needs and the work environment at the moment. Not exactly sure what all that means, but it means she decided and that's the way it is. So it looks like now Senate Bill 853 is dead. Today's public hearing was pulled off the calendar, but Senator Canope said he is grateful for the change. He told us, I appreciate the governor joining us in our effort to end this unfair and wasteful policy. And on the House side, Republican leader Representative Vicki Brees Iverson told us Senate Bill 853A highlighted a necess necessary fix to a wasteful policy. I'm pleased the governor took action in response to the concern raised by this bipartisan bill and practiced fiscal responsibility. This decision is not only necessary, but good for Oregon. And here's my opinion on all this. The governor does deserve credit and appreciation from us taxpayers for stopping the ridiculous practice. As the treasurer, Tobias Reed, told me months ago, if you want to live in another state other than Oregon and work for the state of Oregon, OK. But don't expect us to pay for it when you need to get back for a meeting. Governor Kotek showed decisive action and bold leadership. I can't imagine it made her many friends in the unions. It probably didn't make them all that happy. But then again, even the union leader said they didn't think it was much of an issue. So maybe it did not impact many of them. Regardless, if we're going to hammer the governor and others for doing things that we think are kind of dumb, then we need to heap praise on them when they do something that we think is really smart. Telling employees they have to pay to return to Oregon from their distant states is a smart thing to do.